what up everybody so i figured i'd do a short video <clears throat> or a relatively short video on the equipment i use a lot of people say hey you know my videos what is this what is that so on and so forth um in in all when everybody whenever anyone asks me you know what i use every single video that i that i do if i use that product i put the description down or i put the link for that product down in, in the description below so if you were to go down and say, hey, you know, you saw me using these Sullivan tip drops, you go down to the description, scroll down, you'll see the Sullivan tip drop uh, link pay or page there. Anyway, so these are the setups I use. You guys see me fishing. Um, when I'm fishing for pike, I really like to use these tip drops. They're a lot of fun, you know. Uh, even I mean walleye anything I, I use them on I use them on crappie I use them on perch I use them on walleye um, I really like them on walleye and pike so I like getting the green tip drops because so each there's there's four different colors there's green pink orange and purple I believe yes and all these different colors actually have their own Facebook page so me I'm team green I always uh um you know suggest for people to get green ones so if, if you guys have these these green tip drops go on facebook and search up team green stds and the page will pop up join it um me or steven branch will let you guys in and what we do is we 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 just post pictures of fish we're catching with these green tip drops we're kind of at a at a at a fun facebook war with team orange and team pink and everybody else so it's just something else bonus you know to make it a little more fun so in these tip drops, what I like to use, you've seen for, so for walleyes, um, in my videos, I'm actually using, this here is a 36 inch light action, uh, rod made by Mike Taki over Yogi Custom Rods. You can see, it's pretty sweet, it has my name on it, wood handle, um, I have 13 long stem reels on them with six pound test. That, that's my panfish setup. Um, I also use it for walleyes. I, you know, if I'm if I'm going exclusively for walleyes, um, I like to use eight pound. I'll I'll do uh, eight pound floor or eight pound mono, and then I'll do like a three foot eight pound fluorocarbon lead. But for the panfish, that's what I've been using. I have I have the wood handle, and I have the cork handle, and these are both light action. These are fun rods. You guys have seen me catch a lot of fish on them. I have two of them set up so this one here actually has a, has a barrel swivel on it and like a foot and a half of line and a quick clip so i'll use that for spoons or jigging wraps or ripping wraps um, for perch and crappie and all other good stuff and this is the one that i use to jig with <clears throat> so i have six pound suffix on both those and then this is another rod i love i just got this year this is a jt panfish snare and I know if you've seen some of my videos, you've seen some epic fish caught on this rod. Um, in my perch video, the, the rod just sits in a holder. And what happens is when the fish takes it, the tip of this rod, and there's, a, there's this titanium spring bobber on here, it, it takes it and you can, you can actually see the rod will start dropping. And you can just pick this rod up out of the holder. And when it starts to load up, you just lift up in the air, set the hook on the fish. It's meant for perch, crappie, you know, panfish and such. But you've seen me catch, I, I caught, or if you know, look back, I caught a 34 inch northern on this. And I also caught a walleye that was six and a half pounds that was right around that 27, 28 inch range. Just huge fish. So that rod will, will handle a big fish if you happen to get hooked up on one. And that also has six pound suffix on it. And I'm just using a plain hook on that. But that's a, that's a JT panfish snare made, made by JT Products. And then rod, last but not least, <clears throat> I just picked these up this year for pike. This is a 42 inch Elite Ice medium heavy action. Uh, it's a Fenwick rod. And I have, now this year, I just got two of these now. This is an Okuma Avenger 20B bait feeder reel. So you'll notice in my videos when I'm fishing for pike with tip drops in March, what I would do is I would lighten my drag up to the point where the northern would grab it and it would take line and then I would just pull the rod out of the holder, tighten up the drag to where I wanted it and then set the hook. These rods are a little bit bigger 
but if you're going for you know exclusively big pike like like that's what these are set up for because i have a uh, 20 pound j braid on here with this is a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader i actually i think i'm going to switch to just straight like 12 inch steel leaders with a treble on it because i know i don't i don't have any problems catching fish like that um and i know the northerns won't break through it you know anyway i run a single treble but this is the key like see this i have a sinker here i have that silver spinner there if i have a shiner on here swimming around and that spinner's flickering around it brings fish in like mad but uh anyway getting back to my reel that's the okuma avenger 20b bait feed reel so the drag is set right now but if you notice on the back of this reel there's a lever if i flip this up this this is a bait feeder switch if i flip that up now this reel goes into bait feeder mode see that i barely pull on this that line comes out so i put it in my tip drop and that's what happens when the tip drop goes down and i want to i want to set the hook on a fish i just pull a little bit of line out flick this down and your reel just a little bit and it, it engages that drag again. Now it goes back to the drag on the reel. So there's no messing with the drag, you know, unless you're fighting the fish and you want to adjust that tension. But that's that bait feeder uh, levers for. And I have two of these exact same setups that I'm used for pike. And then also, you'll notice uh, in some of my videos, maybe I've, I've been using some Fraybill and, Be and Beaver Dam insulated round tip ups uh, for this cold weather. But I just the other day started using these. And like right now, today, I'm not out fishing today, but it's uh, this morning. It was 26 below without the wind chill, and it was 52 below with the wind chill. But I was using these in zero degrees the other day, and this is a this is a non-freeze bobber. These things are sweet. You put it on your put on your rod, and what you do is you see the inside there. They come with a non-toxic non-toxic solution. You just dump some of that in there, put that on there, place this in the water, and then the hole will actually freeze around this bobber but the line will still freely move. So this tip drop will stay totally functional even in cold weather. Um, so what you do is you'll, you'll see your chip drop down, walk over, just kick the hole a little bit to break the break the bobber, the hole open, set the hook, fight your fish, pull it in, and reset it. It's, uh, it's that simple. Ooh, that hook is sharp. Okay, so I've covered my rods. I've got Mike's rods. I love these rods, especially this ghost rod. You can get it in any color if you want, and they're very affordable, by the way. Um, great setups. Lures. Three Northern Jigs. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I prefer the, the prefer the four millimeter. Here's a four millimeter long shank that I can put a, a bigger soft plastic on to target big droppies. But the three and four millimeter are my go-to four pan fish. Um, the, he also makes other. There's like the shoehorn here. I'll I'll include a picture of, of my of my case here. But three four millimeter. I see some people go with five or six millimeter. They're a little bit bigger. But it depends on where you're fishing at. Some places have bigger bait. Big alerts. Clyde Morgan with Three Northern Jigs. Him and his wife, Tara, they uh, they hand paint these, you know, so it's not like they're a production line thing where they just get painted like that. Anyway, uh, and then also, I use uh, I use a lot of their spoons. Actually, I I have, a, I have a bunch of them here together. I need to sort these out a little bit better, of course. Well, I'm just going to grab them. That's what I'm going to do. These spoons here are, I think these are 16th ounce. They're just small. They have little flicker blades on them. Um, and they work amazing. I mean, there's, there's this white crappie. There's all kinds of colors. Um, but I, I hammer the fish on them, perch, crappie, walleye, everything. Um, we caught trout on them for gosh sakes. They are fantastic jigs or spoons, I should say. I also use other traditional stuff. You know, I'm still a, a big fan of like the jig and wrap. That's a good quality jig. Catch a lot of perch, a lot of walleyes on that.
soft plastics. Here's my soft plastics right here. And I use nothing but the three Northern Jigs plastics. That's a lot of them. I've been stocking up on these bad boys because why not? You know, if you're gonna spend some money on the fishing stuff. I always like to have backups. So, but here's some of the Vipers. You guys see me use those in videos. That chartreuse with the speckle and or the pink are just amazing. The white ones are also fantastic to mimic a wax worm. I love those. And they, I mean, there's there's lots of other ones too. Um, my my go-to for crappie fishing is right here. Set that down. <clears throat> These are the pink minnow, or this is the, the chartreuse of speckles, and there's the pink minnows. They are fantastic on perch, crappie, walleye, same thing. Here you'll see I have a size bigger. So if I if I'm if I want to pick some bigger carb or crappies out of those groups, I'll uh put that on that that four long shank hook, pick the bigger crappies out of there. But soft plastics over at Clyde, over there at three northern three northern jigs. That's the way to go. I keep them in, like these are all my minnows. I keep them in one, one quart bag. That way I'm not running through them all looking. Same thing. I got my vipers in another bag over here. So I'll put them back when I get a chance. When I'm done. Um, I carry all these rods in the new striker bag. It uh, fits five rods um, up to 36 inches long, you know. And they go into tubes, they don't just lay in the bag, they go into some tubes and they protect these rods, you know, they're custom rods and so you, know, you, want, you want to take care of your stuff. Anyway, last but not least, here's my Hummingbird Ice 45. Look at this thing. Look at this, this is, this, this is just a case and this is for me, I hole hop so much. I will fish on the ice up until like zero degrees, five below and I'll hole hop and I carry this around because I broke the handle off at one time and then I lost it. I was gonna glue it back on. Here's my Ice 45. It is all beat up. I've had it for, I think, six years. Five or six years, it's since like, maybe seven years. But it still works fine. Um, probably clean the screen off if I wanna do, but I didn't. The good thing that I like about these uh, Ice 45s or any of the, of the Hummingbird Ice series is the fact that they they can zoom any part of the water column. That is a that is a huge thing for me. Um, I like Vexilar. They are a fantastic unit. Um, they're really bright. I like how they have the big flat screen nowadays. I like the Hummingbird. Markums are good too. I've never owned a Markum, but um, the 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 Vexilars only only downside. Now I know people are going to be be like, you know, it doesn't matter because it really doesn't in certain aspects. So if you don't fish over 30 feet deep or so on and so forth, you know, or if you don't fish, like I fish tulipies in 90 feet of water on some of these lakes and maybe they're at 35, 45 feet down and I can zoom into that, that part of the water column. When I put this flasher in and I see that little tiny hairline, I will zoom to that part of the water column and see those fish. All of a sudden I'm zoomed in that those fish blow up to be a large mark and I can see them much better to catch them. Um, Vexilars, they only zoom the top it's the top 12 or 15 feet and the bottom 12 or 15 feet of the water column. So you can't get in the middle, which 90% of people, you know, don't need to worry about that, you know. And uh, there isn't a million people that fish tulipies, so it might not matter to you at all. What I always tell people is everything's you know, works great. Um, use what equipment fits you best. That's the most important thing. Um, yeah. Let's see here, um, anything else? My fish house, you guys, you guys see me, uh, I have an Otter Pro Lodge. It's a, it's a hub fish house, I think it's the XTH Pro Lodge. But it's a insulated hub style thermal fish house. And that's a, that's a great piece of equipment. I can set up in there. Even if I don't hole hop, I'll set that up, turn the heater on, hole hop for however long, maybe I wanna warm up, go inside there, fish inside for a little bit, you know? Um, or if I have somebody with me, Maybe they want to fish inside, but it's, you know, it's a nice piece of equipment. 
Is that why you stay warm in there? Yeah. Gosh, I think that covers about everything that I'm I'm using for equipment wise. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna put the links for all of this stuff in the description of this video. So anything I talked about here, go to the description, scroll down, you'll find the Facebook page for it or the website page for it, one or the other. All right, and I can't forget this. Um, I just got this auger about three weeks ago, and there's the uh, there's the box for it right there. This is the brand new Eskimo F1 gas auger. It's an eight inch. This thing weighs twenty two pounds, so I you know I think it weighs the same amount as like an ion. Um, but I had this thing out in negative temps the other day. It sat on the ice for probably two and a half hours outside in those temps. You know, I hit the choke, hit the primer ball four or five times. Second pull, it started right up. So it, it's a good auger. Um, you know, I haven't tested it for the entire year, but in the last three weeks or so, I've drilled a lot of holes with it. And it's a good, fast auger. They, you know, they got the, the aluminum transmission in it now, or gears, whatever. And um, the, the, the gear ratio is a, lot, is a lot higher, so you can drill faster with this thing. But uh, yeah, this is the 8-inch Eskimo F1 just out this year. But it's a, it's a pretty valuable piece of, piece of equipment. Um, I had an old Strike Master before this, and it died on me. Finally, after a long, long time, in thousands and thousands of holes, I've drilled with it. Anyway, can't forget my drilling equipment. Had to get, get that in the video too there, guys. Anyway, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you guys uh, like this video. Let me explain everything a little bit. Just one more thing. If you go with chip drops, team green. Ah, peace out.